Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be uh, seeing the cross in the tabernacle or seeing Christ in the tabernacle. This might be the last study, I'm not sure, but it's going to be on the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy of Holies. And um, let's take a look. Well, the word Ark, as in the Ark of the Covenant, you know, everybody thinks of uh, was Indiana Jones, right? That's what they think about when you mention the Ark of the Covenant. Now, there was a guy named uh, Ron Wyatt, and he had some theories about the Ark of the Covenant. I don't know how true they are. Um, I don't know. You know, you'll if you start doing a little research on the Ark of the Covenant, you'll probably come across Ron Wyatt's name. Um, I don't know. I don't know how true any of that stuff is. Um, but uh, not much surprises me anymore. So... All right, one of the first usages of the word ark is Genesis 6, when Noah was told to build an ark. Of course, uh, that was a boat, or more like a barge. And um, so, but it's not the same word as the Ark of the Covenant. So, yeah, everybody should know about the uh, flood of Noah and the ark. So that's one usage of the Ark. And then there's another. All right. Uh, now there is another word for Ark, as in what Moses was put into. So let's go to Exodus chapter 1 real quick, verse 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. All right. So remember uh, the story of Joseph? I hope you... <coughs> yeah, I most certainly hope you know the story of Joseph in Egypt, right? So uh, verse 5. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70, 70 souls... For Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Now, in the days of Joseph, there was a Semitic group of people called the, uh, I think they were the Hiskos, H Y. Uh, K-S-O-S, -S, I believe that's how you spell it. They were Semitic cousins with the uh, Israelites, and they were in charge of Egypt at that time. Some people say northern Egypt, because Egypt's basically upper Egypt and lower Egypt. And then uh, they were overthrown eventually by the Egyptians. Now, Egypt was known as the land of Ham. Now, if you remember the story of, in, of um, after the flood, you had Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Ham had Canaan, and Noah cursed Canaan. Canaan was the son of Ham. Just remember, Ham's not kosher, right? That's a joke, people. Uh, Egypt is never spoken of favorably in Scripture that I know of. So Israel went into Egypt, and the Lord wanted to bring Israel out of Egypt. So how can I prove that uh, Egypt was uh, the land of Ham? And remember... Ham's son Canaan was cursed by Noah. Psalms 105.23 Israel also came into Egypt, 
and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? 23. All right, let's go to verse 24. And he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. Speaking of Israel, right? Making them stronger than their enemies. The Egyptians, right? He turned their heart to hate his people to deal subtly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. They showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. Well, who did Moses and Aaron show all the wonders to? The plagues of Egypt, right? The land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish. Their land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chambers of their kings. Now, these are all the plagues of Egypt, which mimic the plagues of Revelation, by the way. And I got a playlist on that if you're interested. And their, uh, verse 30, their land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chambers of their kings. He spake, and there came divers sort of flies and lice in all their coasts. And he gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. I mean, this is speaking of Egypt, the land of Ham. So keep that in mind. Now, Revelation 11 and verse 8, speaking about the two witnesses that confront the false prophet. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and, and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Uh, it's funny, you know, when you're talking about Mystery Babylon, everybody says Rome, Rome, Rome. Well, if their Messiah or if their Lord was crucified in Rome, well, it sure ain't Jesus. They got another, G, they got another Christ, and it ain't, it's not Jesus. Because Jesus was not crucified in Rome. The great city was considered Jerusalem, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And of course, they'll argue and say, well, you know, it was the Romans that crucified Jesus, so te technically he was, you know, crucified in Rome. I don't think so. All right. Back to Exodus number one. All right, so uh, the uh, Egyptians were ruled over by the Hyksos, H-Y-K-S-O-S, -S, I think it's spelled, something like that. You can read about it. They were Semitic cousins of the Hebrews. So when uh, Joseph got his wife from the, the, the priest, one of their priests, they were cousins. All right, so the Hiskos were kicked out, and then the uh, native Egyptians took back control of their country, the land of Ham. Ham is never spoken of nicely. The children of Ham are never spoken of nicely in Scripture. Uh, Libya, Ethiopia, those are the countries that are associated with Ham. And Egypt. So, so what did they do? They, uh, if you don't know the story, they made slaves of Israel. Okay? They made slaves of them. And the people cried out to the Lord. All right, so uh, what happens here? In verse 22, Exodus 1, And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. So he decreed that all the male Hebrew children would be killed. You know, thrown into the Nile. You ever heard of a Nile crocodile? 
Yeah. A uh, baby would be a tiny little snack for a Nile crocodile that weighs, what, half a ton or whatever they weigh. So, um, and then what happens to the daughters? The daughters would, uh, if they wanted a husband, they'd have to marry an Egyptian, right? And uh, Ezra 9 doesn't speak too highly of that kind of stuff. So, all right. So, how, what happens here? The ark. Exodus chapter 2, verse 1. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took of him an ark. She took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and laid it in the flags by the river's brink. Now, you know, made it like a little raft, an ark. And hopefully you know the rest of the story. If you haven't read, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go to Genesis 1-1 and start reading until you get to Revelation chapter 22. So they put Moses in what's called an ark. Basically, it's like a little float, like a little basket. And then uh, Pharaoh's daughter found it and decided, hey, I want to keep this kid. It's a nice looking kid. I'm going to keep it. And then Moses led Israel out of Egypt. See, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and they wandered in the desert 40 years because he wanted to get Egypt out of Israel. All their satanic practices. So, all right. So, enough of that. There was an ark of Noah. There was an ark of Moses. Now we're going to take a look at the ark of the covenant. Uh, there's a couple of points that I want to get by everybody. For I, I'm of the opinion that uh, that little country in the Middle East is going to want to reinstitute animal sacrifices. And that would be the ultimate denial of what Christ did on the cross, the shedding of his blood reinstituting animal sacrifices. That would be a t complete and total denial of what he did. And I do believe they're going to rebuild a temple. That's just my opinion. I mean, you know, I've been wrong before on things. Uh, wouldn't be the first time. But, you know, that's my educated guess. Now, with that in mind, do not be surprised if the you-know-whos claim that they found the Ark of the Covenant. You know, maybe that's why, that maybe that was the real purpose of the movie Indiana Jones. So that, uh, you know, people are used to the idea of the Ark. Because, after all, they can say, hey, we found the ark. God wants us to rebuild the temple and honor him by whatever, you know, their little, their little rituals and deals. Now, that doesn't mean that if they claim that they found it, that doesn't mean it's the original ark. Because in my Bible, it says the ark is in heaven. However... Don't be surprised if they make a replica and claim it's the original. Uh, I mean, after all, you know, sometimes it scares me that these kind of things pop in my head. I don't know. You know, I could say, well, yeah, the Lord put it in my, my you know, gave me this info, but maybe, maybe not. Sometimes I think like the enemy does. And that's, I don't know, It's sometimes it's kind of scary. But then again, uh, Jesus said, be wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. So, be as wise as serpents, right? 
So, uh, if they, you know who's claimed that they found the Ark of the Covenant? It's probably a fake. It's probably a recreation, a replica, whatever. Um, Ron Wyatt said that he found it. I don't know. I don't know what to believe in hardly anymore. If it's not in the Bible, I... I take it with a, I don't take it with a grain of salt. I take it with a, an entire salt shaker. But there's another thing, too, I want everybody to understand. Judaism and Islam are not that far apart. Uh, they're really not. Uh, matter of fact, the Noahide Jews consider Muslims uh kind of brothers in a sense. Uh, personally, I think a lot of the animosity in these wars are sort of like the left-right paradigm that you see between the Republicans and the Democrats. I mean, let's face it, no matter who gets elected, uh, Republican or Democrat, the course never changes. You know, the ship is always on the same course. You know, uh, the rhetoric might change somewhat, but it's the same. Uh, left wing, right wing, it's still the same bird, okay? Uh, the same unclean and hateful bird that's uh, mentioned in Revelation. And who knows, maybe those uh, Muslim... Wars are window dressing. Sort of like when the news media goes after Trump, you know. Oh, Trump's bad. Trump is this. Trump is that, you know. And believe me, I am no supporter of Biden or Harris or Trump or Pence. To me, they're all, you throw them in a bag, shake it up, pour it out, and you don't know which one's going to go to hell first. I mean, it's just... You know, that's just the way it is. So, but the point is, uh, maybe I'll do another study on um, the Ishmael, the Arabs, and the um, Esau, the you-know-who's connection. Esau married a Hittite Canaanite woman and if you don't know who they were they were of the fallen angel human hybrids of Genesis 6 and Esau married into him and he decided because it didn't please his family his parents he decided to marry uh, Ishmael's daughter or daughters I forget if he married one or two and I just wonder how many of Ishmael's um, family married Esau into Esau. Uh, you know, there was probably some uh, intermarriages between them. And once you've destroyed the bloodline with marriage of the Canaanites, it's done, people. You know? And... 95% of your churches totally deny this stuff. I mean, it's so plain in Scripture, a couple hours study, and it's proof. And people say, well, I'm on the fence about that. Well, that's because you don't want to, you know, uh, confront the whosoever will people. These whosoever will people are, are idiots. Well, no, they're not idiots. They're ignorant. I'm sorry, they're ignorant. They don't know. I, it's, just, it's just the way it is. You know, if you've married into the Canaanite sea line, you're done. It's over. Your family is done for. Read Ezra chapter 9 if you think I don't know what I'm talking about. The solution was divorce your wife, hand the kids, the hybrid kids to them, the mamzers, the bastards, 
And a bastard in the Hebrew does not mean what bastard does in the English modern usage today. Well, they had a daddy, but they didn't have a mommy. They had a Canaanite. And a Canaanite's not a mommy. God wanted his the Hebrews to marry the Hebrews. And there was a lot of mixing going on. King Herod and his family were Edomites, according to Josephus, a Jewish historian that lived during that time. And from what I understand, he was a Christian. He became a Christian. And he said King Herod was an Edomite. Matter of fact, he burned um, the genealogical records in the temple just so that people wouldn't know who he, his, him and his family were. A little bit of piece of history that uh, they don't want you to know about. But my point is, is that um, there's a connection between Ishmael and the Jew, so-called uh, sin of Gog, of Satan, Revelation 2.9. Uh, there's a connection there. And the Noahides, the Jewish Noahides, consider the Ish, uh, Muslims, uh, they consider them Noahides. Look up the seven Noahide laws. Every Christian is guilty of the first one. Not to have any idols or worship false gods. Penalty is execution. Method, beheading. Yeah. And it's on the books in the United States and probably in Europe, too. I'm not familiar with laws in Europe, but I am familiar with laws in the United States. Matter of fact, I took business law in college. I know how to look up things pertaining to the law. And uh, so here it is. You've got the, the Jews and the Muslims in agreement on some things. And honestly, like I say, I think the supposed friction between the two of them, I think a lot of that is just a show. Now, the, um, the Muslims are expecting a false messiah to come, and then they think, they believe, they, from what I understand, they've been taught that the false messiah will be destroyed by the true messiah. I think they call him the Mahdi. Um, I don't know how many of you have watched Dune, but uh, what was it? Paul, whatever his name was, the hero at the end. Uh, they called him I think it was Mahdib, the Mahdi. That's what they called him. The Messiah. The Muslim Messiah is going to be the Mahdi. So what they believe, the Muslims believe, is there's going to be a false Messiah who's going to be destroyed by the true Messiah, their Messiah. Well, isn't that basically what Christians believe, that the Antichrist will be destroyed by the Christ. But the thing is, suppose the Muslims have two false messiahs. You know, they have a false messiah come, and then another messiah comes who's false that destroys the first one, and then proclaims that he is the true messiah. And if you had the Muslim Islam Inmans proclaiming the Messiah has come, and if you had the rabbis also claiming, oh, the Messiah has come, oy vey, and you had John MacArthur and uh, the Graham family and Benny Hinn and Kenneth Copeland and Paula White and uh, uh, Creflo send me many a dollar and... Uh, the rest of the TBN and 700 Prophets of Baal Club crowd, all proclaiming that Christ has come, along with all the rabbis, 
You think Christians wouldn't fall for churchgoers? I'm sorry, not Christians. Churchgoers wouldn't fall for it? I think they would. I think the great majority would. So there might actually be two false messiahs before Christ comes in the clouds with glory. Oh, and there's another thing too. There is a thing called Project Bluebeam. I've got uh, some of those uh, videos. Well, I didn't do the videos, but um, I bookmarked them on my playlist. I think it's on the End Times Education playlist. I'm not sure. But uh, Project Bluebeam, they use holograms. And people, they look pretty darn real if it's not computer generated images for a video if it actually is holograms they look really real and um, you know they could fake a messiah coming in the clouds um, and then have the messiah come and then destroy the other false messiah and then say, even Christ has come. The Mas oh, our Messiah, Hom uh, Yeshua Hamashiach has come for the Arabs and for the, for the Jews. He's the great world leader, and he's going to save us from, who knows, the virus and famine and wars and uh, disease. And uh, he's going to be the Messiah. He's going to save us all. So bow down and worship him, take his mark, or get your head cut off. Think about it, people. Think about it. You know, in Acts chapter 1, and this throws the preterists out of the water, um, everybody watched Christ being taken up into the heaven in the clouds. And there were two angels, well, they were called men, but, you know, they were angels, I'm pretty, pretty sure. And they said, why are you gazing up into heaven? This Jesus that you see getting taken up is going to come in like manner. He got taken up in the clouds, he's going to come back in the clouds. And that's the Bob paraphrase. Jesus is going to come in the clouds. But just because you see a Messiah come in the clouds... Project Blue Beam holograms doesn't necessarily mean it's the right Messiah. This is why I've been beating this horse to death. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So if you don't see graves opening up and spirits flying out, you know, going up in the air, well, let's read verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So if we are not caught up in the, in the air to meet the Lord in the air, if we're not flying up in the air to meet the Lord in the air as he's returning, it's the wrong Messiah. Period. This is probably one of the most important things you'll ever learn from the Bible um, if, if this uh, if we are the end time generation. And I know they've been talking about the end times for the last 2,000 years. Oh, it's the end times. It's the end times. Um, I think it was in the 1840s before the Civil War. It was the Millerites. Uh, they called it the Great Disappointment. And out of that came the Jehovah's Witnesses. Out of that came the Seventh-day Adventists. 
and uh, I forget there was another group, and I forget who it is. You know, I haven't taken church history, and I took church history in Bible college. Uh, plus, I did my own studies of church history because I don't trust any one source. I mean, I'll I'll read it from three or four different angles, but uh, there was another group, and I can't remember who they were. Might have been the Church of Christ. I'm not sure. If somebody wants to fill me in, please do. But the point is, people, the Lord's going to be returning from heaven. The voice of the archangel, the trump of God, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, are going to be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Period. And if we are the end time generation and all these events happen, keep that in mind. May the Lord, Holy Spirit, bring this to your remembrance. Because, let's face it, 99 point something percent of the world is probably going to be fooled. I mean... It's just they don't teach this stuff. I mean, the Baptist Church doesn't even believe we're going to be here for this stuff. They they all believe, teach the pre-trib rapture. Oh, we're not going to be here for the mark of the beast. We're going to be flying out of here at the at the before the the pre-trib rapture. We're not even going to be here. Boy, are they going to be surprised? You know. When that false prophecy fails, and they find out that, uh, you know, the Lord didn't feed them, and they're either going to have to take the mark to, to feed their families. I've, I've even heard people tell me, I was in a some kind of a, I don't know if you remember the, the electronic bulletin boards. You know, that stuff was before Facebook and all that that I remember. But there was a Christian group, and uh, one woman supposedly said that, well, you know, the Lord won't get mad at me if I take the mark of the beast to feed my children. I'm like, what? What? You know? This is the mentality. So, you know, if they come up with a, um, an Ark of the Covenant, don't believe it. If you see a Messiah come, and we're not flying up to meet him in the air, don't believe it. Read Matthew 24. Jesus plainly said that the false Christ comes first. If they say he's in the desert, believe it not. If he's in the secret chamber, don't go there. I'm paraphrasing, because I don't remember the whole thing. I probably needed to memorize more Bible verses. Um, I haven't. But I'm a general a generalist for the Bible studies. You know, I try to know a little bit about everything. And this way, if somebody asks me something, even if I can't give them a complete answer, I've got a partial answer. And then I can look into it deeper and then give them a more complete answer. You know, the Bible's three quarters of a million words, over 750,000 words. And I have familiarity of, with most of it, um, or at least I try. You know, there's like, I've met people that just specialize in one, like one area of the Bible and they know it, they got it down. Just like that, uh, the guy, uh, revelationscriptures.com. When it comes to the book of Revelation, he knows his stuff. I mean, I've learned a lot from him. And I'm on his Facebook thing, and he made me an admin so I could post my studies. I guess he trusts me. I'm probably going to get banned soon because I've been posting about the uh, Judaism being a heresy and stuff. And boy, I'll tell you what, you could tell who they are because, you know, 
they have no problem with Jesus being called a false prophet. They have no problem with uh, you know Mary being called a whore that got pregnant uh, after getting paid by a Roman soldier. They got no problem with that. Jesus being a saucer. Um, they're always worried about uh, anti-you-know-what-ism. Um, yeah, that's what they're always worried about. So, I mean, it's it's pretty easy to pick out. These groups are horribly infiltrated. Absolutely horribly. And, and if they're not uh, infiltrators, they're just Zio churchgoers. And they deserve to go to hell. They really do. You know, they never, they don't read their, they don't read the words of Jesus. All they do is listen to their pastors. You know, and their pastors work for the devil for the most part. I think I can count on one hand the uh, number of pastors that I actually respect. And uh, Dave Wilkerson was one of them. The cross and the switchblade. He died. And then uh, Colin, whatever his name is, took over. And he's not the same. Uh, Arnold Murray. Dan Gaiman of Shell City, Missouri. Um, you know, Kent Hoven. He were really Kent Hoven really wasn't a pastor per se, but I used to wonder how could this guy know this much and be uh, pre-trib, and then after he spent nine months in prison for the gospel's sake, uh, he figured it out. He became post-trib. I was like, wow, wonderful. But there's there's very few very few pastors that I, I would listen to and trust. Very few. Very, very few. So keep that in mind, people. That's probably the most important thing. There might actually be two false uh, Christ before the real Christ comes. Very possible. So that's why I've been beating that 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 horse to death, you know, about uh, if we're not caught up in the clouds. If we are the end time generation, that'll be the most important thing that I could ever teach anybody. Don't fall for the false Christ. Period. So, I might just make this ARC series a two-parter um, because there were things in the ARC, and I want to cover that. Aaron's uh, rod was in the ARC. The manna was in the ARC. And uh, the Ten Commandments were in the Ark of the Covenant. And I want to go over that and uh, the meanings of all that. You know that Aaron, uh, when he, uh, he had a rod, you know, like a staff, like a stick, a big stick, you know, speak softly and carry a big stick. Um, when he confronted Pharaoh, he uh, threw down his staff and it turned into a snake. Well then, if you know the story, Pharaoh's magicians did the same thing and their staffs turned into a snake. Well, then Aaron's s serpent swallowed <laughs> their, their snakes, their serpents, swallowed them up. I guess like spaghetti, huh? <laughs> Gone. And uh, and then Aaron's rod budded, you know, like like a plant bud, a budded, and I think it produced, if I remember correctly, it was produced almond or an almonds. I'm not sure, an almond or almonds. Uh, what was the spiritual significance of an almond? I have no clue. And if anybody knows, I'd be interested in knowing. 
Um, but Aaron's rod was in the ark, the Ten Commandments, and a pot of manna. So, you know, I want to kind of go into that. Plus, I want to go over uh, some other things about the ark and the mercy seat. You know, very uh, that that's a very important thing. What's the mercy seat? You know, once a year the high priest would go in and offer blood on the ark in the mercy seat. And who's the high priest? Christ. Christ was prophet, priest, and king. The Muslims even admit that they believe that Jesus was a prophet, a true prophet. Well, the heresy of Judaism believes he was a false prophet. So, but uh, the Muslims, that's where it ends with them. So, I think I'm going to make this a two-parter. And oh, by the way, I don't know about you, but uh, have you ever seen a, a, a magic show, Magicians, Harry Potter? You know, they have their little magic wands. I always wondered, is that a corruption of Aaron's rod? You know, King David says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I think that's Psalms, 23rd Psalms. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I, I kind of wonder if the magic wand is a corruption, a counterfeit of Aaron's rod. I don't know. I could do an entire Bible study on the rod. I mean, probably be an hour long. Maybe longer. I don't know. But... Uh, just keep that in mind, people, that uh, I kind of wonder if we're going to see the mark of the beast, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast. I honestly think we will, just from the life that I've had. Um and the training. I, you know, I've had people say, well, Bob, why don't you do a, a testimony? You know, tell them about your life. Eh. You know, it's not about me. It's about Christ. My story isn't important. His story is extremely the most important thing. What you do with Christ is the most important thing you could ever do in this life but I'll tell you this all the schooling and training that I've had and I'm not even talking about Bible college I took electronics I took computer science I took business college I took legal studies um, the mother of my children told me, she says, if I would have concentrated in one field, I would have had a doctorate degree. And I added it all up, and she was right. I hate to admit it, but she was right. And I'm not even talking about Bible college, because I got a master's in Bible college. That's six years. I'm not even counting that. I'm just talking about the vocational schools, the college, the all the certificates, uh, but I'm not bragging to tell you how smart I am. The thing is, all this stuff was pointing like the electronics and the computers. They actually have the technology to do the Mark of the Beast now, where they could identify every man, woman, and child and tie in your government ID with your banking information system for every person in the world. 
and be able to track every single transaction that you do. They, this is technology they didn't have. Uh, they didn't have that technology 50 years ago. But they do today. They got satellites, instant worldwide communication. I can pick up the my on my computer, I can get on, uh, what is it, Skype? And I could talk to somebody on the other side of the world in Japan, from Florida to Japan, almost instantaneously, and talk to them in real time and see their picture while they're talking to me on the computer. You, you know, it, it's just absolutely amazing. And all the training that I had before Bible college was pointing to show me the devil's plan. Now, I don't know about CERN. I did a thing on CERN uh, in Switzerland that collider and everybody says oh yeah they're doing portals and blah 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 you know i was watching um some things i, I don't know how many of you watched uh sg1 stargate you know portals to different places and then they had uh sliders um They've had so many different TV shows on time travel and uh, alternate universes, multiverses, they call it. Uh, they've had that in um, Justice League, which is, you know, Superman, Batman. Uh, I mean, it's all kinds of sci-fi stuff. I don't know. You know, maybe they'll... Uh, have the Messiah come through uh, a portal that CERN produces or something. I don't, I don't know what they're going to do. But, uh, you know, there's a reason they put all this junk out there in the, um, you know, they, uh, the movies and television. You know, they do that stuff for a reason. They're really, you know. There's a reason for all that they do. I don't know how many of you saw John Carpenter's They Live, but uh, They Live was probably closer to being a documentary than science fiction, if you ask me. People have no idea. So, all right, well, I'm going to do a part two of the arc. Um, of the covenant, the um, the items, or what it did, um, and what have you, and and if you're thinking Indiana Jones, you got the wrong, you're barking up the wrong tree, you know. Definitely barking up the wrong tree. So, all right, well, Chaplain Bob here, and uh, all blessings, praise. Glory and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <laughs>